In today's video, you'll see a girl who just disappeared inside a hotel and no one could tell how. And there is a family which snatched a boy from his illegitimate parents only for DNA to prove a hundred years later that he was not their lost son. First though, let's look at this woman who went missing breaking an aviation record. Number 10. Amelia Earhart Inspired to leave a legacy in the history of the aviation industry, American aviation pioneer Amelia Earhart, along with her navigator Fred Noonan, embarked on a groundbreaking mission to circumnavigate the world. On the 2nd of July 1937, the two were spotted fueling their Lockheed Model 10 Electra plane at Ley, New Guinea, on one of their final legs of the trip. It all seemed like any other ordinary flight, but as they were just above the center of the Pacific Ocean, they sadly lost their bearings. And that's how they vanished over the Pacific Ocean, never to be seen again. Whether she ditched the plane into the ocean or found a landing spot nobody knows, attempts to trace Earhart and Noonan were unfruitful. Eventually, the court declared Amelia Earhart dead in 1939. Even though she never achieved her desire to be the first woman to circumnavigate the globe, she left a legacy as the first female to make a solo trip across the Atlantic Ocean. Number 9. Eliza Lam Eliza Lam was on a typical trip to Los Angeles, and she decided to stay at the Cecil Hotel. By then, she was just a student at the University of British Columbia. Lam would end up disappearing while at the hotel, and nobody could tell her whereabouts. It wasn't until a client complained that the water at the hotel was gross that her body was discovered later rotting inside a rooftop water container. Whatever caused her death remains a mystery, but investigators were able to unearth CCTV footage that showed the last moment of Lam in the hallways and elevator. The footage was extremely disturbing. It shows Lam behaving erratically in a hotel elevator the night before she disappeared. There is no one around, and finally, we see her disappearing from the camera's view. An autopsy performed on her remains was inconclusive on what caused her death. Eventually, authorities ruled her death as an accident, with bipolar disorder being a significant contributing factor. This is because Lam was already living with bipolar disorder. Number 8. Bison Dele if you're an avid fan of the NBA, you probably know Bison Dele, originally known as Brian Williams. Dele was a successful basketball player and NBA champion who was a teammate of Michael Jordan. He had a lifelong battle with mental health and at one point attempted suicide. Now, after retiring from the NBA on July 6, 2002, Dele decided to take a boat trip from Tahiti along with his brother and girlfriend. However, 14 days later, Dele's brother, Miles DeBoard, would return to Tahiti alone on the boat. Up until today, no one knows where Dele and his girlfriend went or what could have happened to them. When the police came after Miles, he purposefully overdosed on insulin, which caused him to slip into a coma and he died shortly after. It is believed that Miles killed everyone on board and dumped their bodies in the Pacific Ocean. However, Miles claimed that he shot Dele in self-defense after he killed his girlfriend. With all of the boat occupants all dead, it becomes hard to tell exactly what happened and how Dele died. Number 7. Lord Lucan Richard John Bingham, better known as Lord Lucan, was born into a rich family as the 7th Earl of Lucan and a member of the House of Lords. He got into gambling and lived a flashy lifestyle. However, when his wife suffered postpartum depression, their marriage hit a crossroad and he lost custody of the children. This placed him in a depression even as his health kept deteriorating. In 1974, the story of Lord Lucan hit headlines after Sandra Rivett, nanny to his three children, was found bludgeoned to death with a length of lead piping at their family home in Belgravia, central London. Lucan was named the prime suspect. It was also reported that Lucan attacked his ex-wife Veronica when she went to check on the nanny. It was not clear where Lucan escaped to. He was last seen at a friend's property in Uckfield where he wrote a letter to his children and called his mother. His car was found abandoned and stained with blood in New Haven, East Sussex. This was really shocking, and even though many theories have since been formulated to describe his disappearance, the hunt for Lucan still continues despite the court issuing his death certificate. Could he be alive, or did he throw himself into the ocean? Well, it all remains a mystery. Number 6. Natalie Holloway 
Alabama native Natalie Holloway traveled to Aruba in 2005 on a senior graduation trip along with her classmates. The 18-year-old was a bright student awaiting to join the University of Alabama on a full scholarship. She was last seen at a club the night before the team was scheduled to return home. Whatever happened on that fateful night remains a mystery because the young girl never showed up for her flight back home. This would trigger an intense search involving local authorities, volunteers, and even the FBI. A reward of $1 million was announced to anyone with reports on the young girl's whereabouts. It's been 18 years now since Natalie disappeared and no one knows exactly where she is and what happened to her. Her disappearance remains shrouded in mystery. However, Van der Sloot, a local, was arrested as a prime suspect after making a conflicted confession. Earlier, he was found guilty of killing another girl in the area, but Natalie's case remains covered in darkness. Number 5. Megumi Yokota Megumi Yokota was born in Nagoya, Japan as the oldest of three siblings. She was a bright, happy teenager who brought warmth into her family. But in 1977, when she was just 13 years old, Yokota just vanished while walking home from school. Her family tried looking for her and even engaged the police, but she could not be found. The government of Japan would end up recording more mysterious disappearances of children in the 70s and 80s. Decades later, the North Korean government admitted to multiple kidnappings of Japanese citizens, including the disappearance of Megumi. According to the statement, Megumi was kidnapped and put to work in North Korea, married, and had a child. However, she took her life at the age of 29 years, and her body was cremated and the remains sent to her family. Her parents were also reunited with their granddaughter and even visited her in North Korea. But they still held some speculation. When the DNA analysis was carried out, it turned out that the cremated ashes were not Megumi's. So where was Megumi? Number 4. Danica Childs In December 2007, just a few days before Christmas, 17-year-old Danica Childs was planning to go shopping with her family in Federal Way, Washington. But she didn't show up for the shopping trip, she was missing at home, and efforts by her mother to reach her were unfruitful as her phone wasn't going through. Her family speculated that she might have fallen victim to child trafficking, and so they reported the incident to the police. Nearly 15 years since her disappearance, no arrests have been made. And with that, it's time for today's best pick. Today's image features a picture of a young girl on one side and the image of the same girl when mature. Let's find out more about this girl with… Number 3. Natasha Ryan In 1998, 14-year-old Natasha Ryan vanished from outside a movie theater near their home in the Queensland town of Rockhampton. After efforts of searching for her proved futile, Natasha's parents believed that she was among the five victims kidnapped, raped, and murdered in 1999 by a serial killer. Leonard John Fraser, an alleged serial killer, was arrested and charged with the murder of Natasha Ryan. Her family was left traumatized. But about five years after her disappearance, police raided a Rockhampton property just a few blocks from Natasha's home. And that raid is what ended up shocking the whole of Australia. Natasha Ryan, a girl who disappeared and was considered dead some five years ago, was there, alive, and crouched in a small cupboard. She was living there with her boyfriend, Scott Black, who was 10 years older than her. She confessed that for five years, the cupboard was her home. She never interacted with anyone else except her boyfriend and never got outside, unless at night. In the end, it was a bittersweet reunion. Number 2. Asia Degree it was on Valentine's Day back in 2000. That's the fateful day when nine-year-old Aisha Degree disappeared. After her father checked on her at midnight of that day, Aisha would go ahead to pack a few belongings in her backpack before disappearing in the middle of the night. Motorists reported spotting her walking alone on the road at about 4 a.m. However, when someone pulled over at the site where she was, she ran away into the woods, never to be seen again. About two years later, her backpack was discovered 26 miles away, and since then no one has had any clue where she is or whether or not she is still alive. On each passing day, her parents remain hopeful that she is alive and will one day return. Number 1. Bobby Dunbar if there is a crazy story of disappearance in the world, then this must be it. I mean, even after going through this story several times, I still can't get it. Seems people out there can have a perfect match. Now, let's get to know all about Bobby Dunbar. 
Back in August 1912, the Dunbar family took a fishing trip to Swayze Lake in Louisiana. Sadly, their four-year-old son, Bobby Dunbar, disappeared. And even after massive nationwide searches for the boy were mounted, they yielded no results. The only speculation was that Bobby was kidnapped. However, ten months later, a boy matching Bobby's description was seen traveling with William Cantwell Walters in Columbia, Mississippi. Walters was arrested in connection with the disappearance of the boy, but he could not understand why he was being arrested. He claimed the boy was the illegitimate son of a friend, Julia Anderson, and his name was Bruce Anderson. No one could believe Walters, and so the boy was given to the dumb bars, and Walters was convicted. However, Julia Anderson defended Walters, insisting that the boy was her son. No one took them seriously, and so the boy grew up as Bobby Dunbar. But 100 years after his death, the mystery surrounding the disappearance of Bobby was solved when DNA revealed that he was not a Dunbar. To date, no one knows the fate of the real Bobby. Thanks for watching.